we are yeah. ready to roll. Chapter and two. Yeah, roll. kind of. <laughs> Jesse, first of all, welcome to Dallas. Thank you. And thank you for coming so that we have a chance to talk with you about heights. My pleasure. Enjoyed it very much. Good. Yes, good I one. really did. Yeah. Very interesting film, really keeps you in the plot and getting to know the characters and all. But let's begin. What is the significance of heights, of the title heights? Have you interviewed Chris yet? No, I haven't. He'll give you a better answer oh, okay. than me, but um, I can try. Um, I think there's an element to this movie that uh, sort of tries to maybe convince the viewer by, by watching the people in it go through this that you need to live your life with a certain degree of, of passion and commitment and you know honesty to yourself. And I think that achieving all those things could represent sort of achieving a a height of, uh, of glory of some kind. Um, I think that the, um, the architecture and the nature of the city itself, uh, New York City, kind of implies this general defiance of gravity in that you can spend most of your time, you know, hundreds of feet above sea level, you know. Um, of course, you could do that in Denver, too, but, you know. Uh, I, those are the only two things that I can come up with offhand. When you ask Chris the same question, he will give you a, a beautiful, eloquent answer that will blow mine out of the water. So, <laughs> Well, yours might add something to his. I hope so. Yes, okay. It's an ensemble cast, and I always wonder when I see an ensemble cast, and so many really fine, good name actors with wonderful credentials, such as yourself, and I always wonder what the advantages and the disadvantages are to being in an ensemble cast? Um, well, I, for me, one of the advantages is um, not having to show up to work every day. That's kind of nice. Um, a lot of time off, you know. Um, another cool thing about doing an ensemble movie is that you've obviously read the script. You have a pretty good idea of what's happening, but there's plenty of stuff that you're not there to see. Uh, during the shooting. So when the movie actually comes out, you get to see how everybody else played out all this stuff that you had only imagined in your mind. Um, and it, the movie's more of a surprise that way. Um, boy, disadvantages? I mean, on a movie like this, the only disadvantage would be that I only would have liked to have done more and you know had more to do. You know, If there was another hour to the movie, it would have been nice to have more scenes or whatever. So. You know, there's not a lot of disadvantages to me to working with a bunch of good actors. Is there more pressure with each scene that you have because you know that the time is being shared with so many other wonderful actors? Is there more pressure to make the scene and make your performance outstanding? Um, I wouldn't say so because that, w that would kind of imply that you're um, caught up in the idea of trying to outdo somebody else or, um, you know, I, I think that the, the, the important thing is in any movie is just to kind of try to be true to what your character is going through and try to really feel it and understand it and identify with it and convey it. And if it's in 10 scenes or 150 scenes, that's still your job. If it's in one scene, it's your job, you know. I, I think what you say is true to some degree because if I only had one scene in a movie, I would certainly, the idea that I had to make it count would cross my mind, but um, kind of not at the, not as judged by anybody else's work or part or, you know, just, you just want to make what you do count, whether it's a minute on screen or every scene, you know. One of my favorite scenes you're in is uh, the audition scene with Glenn Close. Yeah. That's really a good, good scene. It's nice, yeah. Yeah, um, people um, kind of laugh and smile and get this energy in the in the theater when you see it with people. In that scene, what were you trying to get across to the audience, and what were you trying to keep and hold back from the audience? Uh, well, I think I was trying to get across um, Alex, sort of slight. You know, he's he's slightly overwhelmed by this, uh, by 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 this this situation. Um, he certainly didn't expect it. Um, and I think, 
in his mind, he's not particularly, he's not really planning on, uh, on following through with this. You know, I mean, he from the start, he's kind of saying, you know, uh, I, I, uh, I, I can't really do this, and you know, and she kind of talks him into it, and he's ultimately put in a position where he feels he has no choice but to just kind of nod and smile and step up to the plate and be a part of of the of the sort of seduction almost. Um, but I think in his heart, I don't think he ever really. I think he entertains the idea, and he doesn't mind the idea. But he, I think it's got a sort of a sour taste for him because it's kind of cheap almost, you know. Um, there are also things that he is trying to keep undercover, but um, I, we, we're trying to not play that up so much because the things that he's hiding in that scene are things that come to light later that if we dwell on it too much, we kind of ruin the, some of the movie, so. You handled that beautifully. Thank you. <laughs> what about Glenn Close and this dark hair? Where I love it. Were you, <laughs> were you startled when you first saw her with the dark hair? I, I um, actually was um, because she's, I, I think she's very beautiful, especially in person. And I just, for my own personal reasons, uh, I happen to be kind of a fan of dark hair. I'm sort of attracted to that in a, in a woman. It's like my type or whatever. Not strictly, but seems to be a pattern for me. So to see her sort of for the first time like that was kind of like, all right, they, you know, kind of added an element that I'm into here, you know, and they didn't know they were doing that, but it, it worked out that way. I think she looked great with the dark hair, so. Jesse, is there anything else you'd like to have a chance to say about the movie or your role? Um, no. I got another movie I could plug. Oh, well, what is it? I'd it's like called to Happy know. Endings. All right. Uh, Don Roos familiar with Don Roos at all, director? Uh, I, uh, what has he done? Did you ever see a movie called The Opposite of Sex? Yeah, okay. Him. Okay. Uh, Lisa Kudrow, Tom Arnold, Jason Ritter, Maggie Gyllenhaal, um, big another ensemble thing. And uh, I'm sure it's gonna come out here in Dallas. It's, it's a very good movie as well, so I'm proud of that one. Completely different character too. I play like a kind of slimy, screwed up, um, aspiring, documentary filmmaker who's a very honest, straightforward guy, but he doesn't really know himself and he doesn't really realize how he sort of manipulates people and he doesn't even really mean to almost. Um, he's kind of a screw up and it was really fun to play that. And it's very different than, than Alec. So and that comes out like, you know, two, um, in about a month and a half. So it's nice to have two very different roles coming out at the same time. It's kind of kind of thing that, you know, reminds me that I, I, I like what I do and I am proud of what I do. <laughs> Fine, because when that comes out, then we'll have a second story. Yeah, there okay. you go. All right, thank you so much, Jesse. Thank really, you. Really enjoyed talking with you. Excellent. Okay, and when you look. In your scene with Glenn Close, the audition, what were you trying to get across to the audience and what were you trying to hold back from the audience? Um, Trying to think if I can answer this differently now. Um, <laughs> no, well, that's uh, fine. That's okay. Fine. As long as you just start. Yeah. Okay. This is a wonderful ensemble cast, but what are the advantages and what are the disadvantages of being in an ensemble cast? Uh, well, the uh, I don't want to really answer. No, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. No, you're thing. doing just okay, exactly good. what we need. Yeah, you're doing just right. <laughs> Okay, um, thank you. And the, the new film is Happy Endings. Yeah. yeah. In Happy Endings, what kind of a role do you have? Uh, I play a, a uh, guy who tries to blackmail Lisa Kudrow's character into letting him make a documentary film about her. Okay. It's kind of messed up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, fine, that'll do it. <laughs> 